All right. Hello, my name is Josie Myers, and I'm here today to talk about our current community geography initiatives that we have going on at Kent State University. I'm a second year master's student who works in the MAP library on campus as part of our MAP IT program. MAP IT's a community minded collaboration between the Kent State University libraries and the Department of Geography. Our aim is to provide spatial data visualization, GIS, and cartographic services to the Kent State University community and Northeast Ohio community at large. This program is a large part of why I chose um, Kent State for grad school, so I'm happy to talk about it here. So just to start off with some info on community geography, some background, good base knowledge. Um, it's the foundation of our program here, and it's an umbrella term that's been used to cover a variety of collaborative research and activism, but has most recently been defined um, in a 2020 article as a form of research praxis, one that involves academic and public scholars with the goal of co-produced and mutually beneficial knowledge. This is one of the first um, solid definitions of community geography in literature. Um, so it's important to keep in mind. So rather than studying um, a community and its workings from the outside, community geographers find value in producing knowledge in conjunction with the group being studied. Many times this allows the community to, di to dictate what's being examined and determine what would be most beneficial to help out actual people, um, rather than simply adding more literature exclusively for academic use or focusing just on the researcher. Um, remember that these ideas of cooperative knowledge production are based on ongoing feminist and black critical geography and must be recognized in order to move geography um, into a more inclusive scholarship and activism. Rather than producing maps and spatial um, data from observation or by analyzing existing data sets, um, community geography and the associated participatory GIS includes the community being studied and brings valuable GIS work and analysis into reach for communities who don't have prior knowledge um, using GIS technology or even what the possibilities with that are. Um, community geographers and researchers, such as the graduate assistant in the MAPIT program here at Kent State, um, can act as a guide for community members, either by simply helping them through the use of an unfamiliar software or as facilitators by helping plan and implement GIS and understand and analyze data um, that's gathered by the program. Um, community geography is an exceptionally valuable tool because it provides community groups and activists with the agency to use powerful spatial tools quickly and effectively through the guidance um, of a trained researcher or GIS professional who's there to help them and advocate for them. Um, this can be particularly important in the university setting because university departments often have the goal of helping the community or reaching out um, in some way and community geography and cartography programs can be an excellent way to do this. So here at Kent State, um, and kind of moving on to our program here, um, this is our map library. Looks pretty standard, lots of maps and not so much community space. But a few years ago, our map librarian had the idea of creating some sort of um, GIS program for the university in the sense that it would be someone completing GIS and map requests for anyone who needed that done. He'd been handling simple requests for a while at that point, but soon realized he was getting more than he could reasonably handle with his other responsibilities. So he suggested to the geography department chair that there was probably enough work for an entire grad assistant position. Um, chair thought it was a great idea and they decided to create the position on kind of a um, trial basis and have a two year um, trial period for that. <clears throat> so after starting this position, they realized that there was definitely enough work um, for a whole graduate assistantship, and there were enough projects being proposed and brought through that could be carried over year to year, um, and therefore making MAPIT and this graduate assistant position a permanent fixture within the department. By having the graduate assistants in two-year positions, there was enough time to structure projects differently than the, just the quick and easy things that he'd been doing before, um, and now we're able to form long-term partnerships within the community. So uh, talking a little bit more about MAPIT as a program, um, it was officially born in 2016 with that first grad assistant. It's a joint position funded 50-50 between the university library and the geography department. And the grad assistant, of course, benefits from that funding. Um, and they also walk away with a great portfolio. And the university benefits from having a person dedicated solely to mapping um, on campus and creating things for campus. 
The original plans for Map It were to mostly work with the campus community, number one, by completing map requests for faculty researchers and publications, um, number two, to help out grad students who might need a map or two done for their research, but um, that fell kind of outside the field of their study. So the thought was that if they only needed one or two maps, there wasn't really any sense in them taking an entire GIS course, so we could have someone who would be able to help them out with that. And then number three, to kind of train the trainer over at our regional campuses, um, help people and faculty over there learn GIS basics to be able to do simple things over there themselves and then come back to us with more complex questions. So pretty quickly, the position um, transformed from those original goals when a connection was formed with a neighboring town's chamber of commerce. So East Liverpool, Ohio, um, was looking for maps made of their downtown to help kind of with redevelopment efforts. The project took actually the entire first two years of that graduate assistance position, and it sparked all sorts of other opportunities with um, nonprofits and organizations and businesses within the East Liverpool area, and then kind of grown over to our area as well. So that project was the first indication that we would be able to reach out and work with actual community members and branch out into the greater Northeast Ohio region um, and help spread mapping knowledge and skills. And since then we've adjusted our goals and responsibilities to focus more on creating maps for the community rather than just our campus community. Um, and then next I'll show a few examples that I've worked on over the past year. So this first one is an example of something, some of the super simple requests that we get from university members and faculty. Um, I'm sure all of us here um, have had interactions like these. Someone finds out that you know how to map and shows you something they need done. They assume it's gonna be a big difficult project um, and it's actually, you know, a couple of clicks and you're, you're all set. Um, in this case, it was a geology professor who'd been using this map here for years in his classes um, and he wanted to replace it and update it. And after chatting with him a bit and getting to know his class's needs better, I actually just set him up with a super simple um, ArcGIS online map. All he was really looking for was the elevation contour lines on campus. So I gave him the opportunity to be able to work with it and choose what he wanted um, shown and able to change the base map to show um, to work best as he sees fit. Um, we also have the attitude here um, at MapIt, since the university is paying for Esri access, we might as well, you know, use it as much as possible. Um, here is our next project. Um, this, oh, it skipped ahead, but that last one um, was a really simple project. And this was something that was a little bit more involved and required a lot more interaction with the people we were working with. Um, this was done with the Ohio Employee Ownership Center on campus here. They work um, and provide resources for employee owned businesses in Ohio. And they wanted an interactive map showing not only the resources available, but also all sorts of statistics on baby boomer owned businesses. Um, so this one involved a lot more collaboration between myself and the center. Um, I did my best to explain to them how the map would work and what we realistically could do um, within this um, program. And with that info, we kind of worked together to decide what it was gonna look like, what information was gonna be shown um, and what they wanted the map to look like. So this is now in their website and hopefully helping lots of people around the state. And then finally, this next one is my favorite program or project that I've worked on so far. Um, and there it goes, and the most collaborative so far. So Main Street Kent is an organization in Kent that works to advocate for small businesses and for the greater Kent community. Um, they organize all sorts of resources and events in town. And last fall, they actually came to map it with the idea of some sort of walking tour app um, that could be used to get people out and about um, downtown safely with COVID um, <clears throat> still present. And after quite a bit of discussion on all sorts of different apps that could be used and like all sorts of different coding programs and lots of things, we finally just decided, um, landed on a story map. Um, we thought that was probably gonna be the most simple. Um, we've got two different maps, one of the public art around town and then also historic structures and stories in our downtown area. So we worked together over a few different months to come up with the routes, narratives, and maps um, that would be included and incorporated into these tours. We wanted them to be able to be self-guided so people could do them independently and be COVID friendly. Um, we also wanted them to be accessible for any skill and ability level. So we made sure all of the routes were accessible um, and we did put them online in this format. So there was an option to explore from home um, as well. In terms of the maps, um, like I said, we use story maps because again, if the university is paying for it and um, we're gonna use it. 
Um, and I was able to give all of the people that were working on this project kind of a crash course um, into ArcGIS Online and Story Maps and all the different options that we had. Um, and they have really enjoyed this format. And we actually have another one in the works coming up after these two. Um, and everyone was able to give input on what they wanted it to look like. It was really neat to work with a group of people. There were about seven of us on this project um, to create something for the community that everyone would be able to use. Once we released the tours, there was a huge positive reaction from the community and a few newspaper interviews later, and there was enough interest for an in-person walkthrough of the history tour. So one of the guys who was involved in creating the tour actually put on um, an in-person version of this earlier this summer and led a very well attended um, in-person walking tour. Um, and I honestly really enjoyed watching this project more from that single idea into a tangible tool for the community to enjoy. Uh, Main Street Kent has been one of our most frequent collaborators and I hope to do more projects with them. This was also an opportunity um, outside of what I had previously had in GIS classes where everything was you know, given to you, all the data and everything. It really helped work through all of the steps that go into creating something like this with an organization. So then with all of those examples that I just went through, I do want to reiterate why community geography is important here at Kent State and honestly why it would be valuable to incorporate in any university setting. So first of all, the university benefits. We formed incredible relationships throughout the university and the community. Um, you can see some of them over in this graphic on the screen. Any, use, any university member is able to come over to us with map needs um, and just kind of propose something or have a very vague idea and then we'll work through it. Um, I've helped people across the university, political science, geology, university extension programs, the library. Um, we worked on maps for grant applications and research papers and all sorts of things in between. Um, I think it's really valuable to have a dedicated map maker who's doing this and focused on collaborative work on campus. Um, Secondly, of course, the community benefits. Any community member, again, can come to us with map requests, ideas. We kind of work through it, figure out with their idea what's possible, um, kind of help them understand what mapping is nowadays, what all the sorts of different things we can do. Um, it's also very important that we're doing this for free. So all sorts of nonprofits will come to us and not have that big of a budget. And we get to do this work for them for free because we do have that university funding behind it. Um, kind of cementing the idea that we're spreading mapping, we're spreading all of these skills out to more people. Um, <clears throat> we're able to provide services and skills to all these different groups, helping people learn and providing mapping resources and support. And then finally, the students at the university benefit. So MapIt was formed with the idea that we would just be helping out grad students who needed maps made for their research. And while this is definitely still something that we do, there are more direct benefits for the students who work for the program as well. I myself can attest to this. Um, honestly, I've got a great portfolio after working for MapIt. Um, it's stuffed with projects that can show how I can work with a variety of organizations and people to create different types of maps and work through ideas and work through the processes to get there. Um, if you're considering a program like this, think of all of the different ways that the community and the university and students will all benefit. Um, and then finally, just a little bit about the future of community geography here at Kent State. So Dr. Jennifer Mapes, she's an associate professor here in the geography department. She's also my advisor. Um, she recently switched to a tenure track position, which means she now has the opportunity to begin organizing and overseeing a community geography lab here. So the proposed plans are actually to transform that map library space um, into a much more collaborative community focused um, physical and virtual space to encourage mapping for and by community members um, and students, essentially creating a much bigger and better map it program. Um, the space will be collaboration focused with all sorts of tools, interactive things, um, whiteboards, smart boards, um, big maps, markers everywhere um, to really encourage that collaborative mapping and share knowledge between the academics at the university, non-academics around campus, and just be able to spread knowledge um, and ideas in between. Um, and I did put her information down in the corner if anyone wants to reach out and learn more about that. And finally, thank you. Thank you for coming to my virtual talk. Um, I will love to take questions in the Slack channel and my information is down in the bottom corner if you would like to reach out to me.